Today I have a mushroom that is full of myth and lore and it's super duper stinky. They're down here on the ground. This amazing Ravenel's stinkhorn. It is a beautiful stinkhorn, uh, which you can see right in front of me here. Now I did a longer piece on stinkhorn mushrooms, which I will leave a link to right here. I would definitely suggest that you go check that out. This is basically uh, extra information, stuff I wanted to get out and just talk about. Um, now, what I have here popping up in the yard is a very, very interesting mushroom because it's part of the stinkhorn family. And there's um, here's some tropical ones that you can see. A lot of the tropical ones have these elaborate veils that come down uh, in this region and cover the stem of the mushroom. I find those fascinating. Some of them open up from the inside but all of them have some uniting features, and that is this gray gleba here that is at the top. This gray gleba is a mucinolagulous mix of spores. Um, it, it's very stinky, and in this one it actually looks a lot like a cap. Sometimes they're in the inside and they open up, and the, they're always attracted to flies. So that's really interesting to me. Um, this one doesn't smell so bad right at the moment, but very soon it's going to smell. Now I've done time lapses on a whole bunch of these and what I've found is that pretty universally if you give these mushrooms some moisture they will all of a sudden um, pop up but but you'll get these eggs all over the place. Let me show you this. Can you see this? They're right here is another one of the witch's eggs. Now the witch's eggs are really interesting because they are found all over here in the mulch. So if you find one sinkhorn mushroom, you'll probably find a whole bunch of other ones. The other thing that's really interesting about these is that uh, the stem here is super hollow and the moisture allows it to elongate and then pretty quickly it will collapse back down. So let me see if I can show you. I can pull this out and this is basically the inside of the egg, uh, right there. People's view of this has changed over the ages, I suppose, and, and that's partly social norms. Back, back in the day, they used to use this for an aphrodisiac for probably obvious reasons. Uh, there, there was this idea that if this looked like something, like a phallus, <laughs> then it probably was was beneficial if you ate it for that very purpose. What's really interesting is that when they did some studies in vitro, they found that, uh, and, th and that's basically just looking at the molecules crushed up in this, how does it affect different cells when, when you put it in a test tube and mix it around. So they didn't do human clinical trials on this. But they found that it shortened the telomeres, and the telomeres are the ends of our DNA, and that helps, uh, helps determine uh, senescence, the onset of senescence for, for people. So as you get older, your telomeres shorten, so that's not a really good thing. Um, so the take home from that study, even though it's kind of hard to interpret, I'll leave a link to that down below. It's, it's, it's difficult to interpret that study, but the point is there are some chemicals in this that are not going to be good for you to ingest all of the time. Now, you wouldn't really want to eat this mushroom because it just doesn't taste that good but you can take one of these witch's eggs and you can slice it open. And if you look on the inside there, there's that white bit. That white bit is edible. In fact, you could eat the whole thing, but I, but I find it uh, much more palatable to eat the inside bit because the outside bit's a little gooey. That, that white bit is what's gonna end up growing into this. So but when it's in the witch's egg though, it's nice and hard and dense and it tastes a little bit to me like a radish although not quite as spicy as a radish. You know, radish has got that real spicy taste, so it's, it's got kind of the flavor, but without the spice, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, I think it would be something that you might want to eat on occasion, just to show people you can. Um, you're not gonna want to eat a ton of it, and I don't think you could eat a ton of it, because you know these witch's eggs are only around for a very short amount of time. Um, but I haven't found any studies that show that it's super good for you. <laughs> Now I find there to be significant differences between this and the common stinkhorn, although from first glance they might look pretty similar. It seems to me as I'm going through all the different you know, footage that I find online, the common stinkhorn um, 
this cap really is significantly different. The cap of the common one, um, as this gleba starts to melt off and, and be eaten up by insects, um, it's a lot more netted, uh, dimpled, I suppose is a good way to put it. Um, so yeah, this one this one is common in the eastern United States. You do have the common stinkhorn found in North America, but a little bit more common out west and definitely throughout Europe. So anyway, interesting find here in the forest. All right, thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you in another short eco fact.